In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, this first sermon will be dedicated to the multicultural ministry and there will be a later sermon uh, later in the service. As we have heard today, today the Great Friday of the Holy Passion Week. And today is the climax of the journey that we were taking throughout the whole week with our Lord Jesus Christ. And today is that climax where we actually follow all the way up to the cross. The sixth hour when our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and on the ninth hour that we just finished when he actually died on the cross. And even though it's a very sad occasion and all the tunes are in the sad tunes because we upset about what our Lord Jesus Christ went through and his sufferings. But the death today of our Lord Jesus Christ is not like any other death. Any death that will be representing the end. But for us, that death is life-giving. His death equals our life. Because he died, we are alive again. Because he's dead, he has opened for us paradise and he has given us a chance to be with him. Through his death, there's, we were born again. We had the chance to go to paradise when it was closed before us before. For us to fully understand exactly what happened today on the cross. There's a very nice symbolic story that I heard I want to share with you today. The story goes something like this. There's two brothers who are sailors. They're working on a, on a, on a ship. And the, these two sailors, one of their, on one of the voyages they had, these two brothers were working the same job. But one of them was a very righteous person, was God-fearing, and he loved God so much, and he led a very righteous Christian life. Whereas his brother was a sinful person who led a sinful life and didn't care about his spirituality at all. So one day on their voyage on, on the ship, they actually they were told that the ship is sinking and there's no way to rescue the ship. So they started to looking for any any way to rescue the people. And there's only some boats that are available to rescue some people, but that's not gonna be enough for everyone. So they said they're gonna choose the custom lots about who will end up being in the boat to be rescued, and the other will have to remain on the sinking ship. So the name of that sinful, of that uh, brother who was living a sinful life, his name, did not come up to be rescued. So he had to remain on the sinking ship. Whereas the righteous brother, his name came. So he had a spot to be rescued. But the righteous brother looked at how his sinful brother was so scared that he was about to die. And his, the good brother said, I know if you die now, you're not gonna go to a good place because of the life that you've been living. So he told him, I'm gonna swap with you. You take my place and I'll take your place, but on one condition, that you promise me you're gonna live my life. So when you live and you be rescued from this boat, you promise me you're gonna live my life. You know how I was living my life in the fear of God and obeying his commandments and his love. You promise me that you're gonna live this life. And he promised him. So he got the spot and he lived, whereas his other brother, the righteous brother, died and sank with the ship. This is exactly what happened today to some resemblance. Our Lord Jesus Christ took our place. We were the ones supposed to be dying. We were supposed to be suffering. But our Lord took our place on the cross today. He took our place and said, I'm going to take your place. But what does that mean? Does that mean we have to promise him, as that brother promised, that we're going to live 
his life. We're going to live a righteous life. And this is beautifully summarized by a, a beautiful verse that St. Paul said in Galatians. This is what St. Paul said. St. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer Christ who lives, but Christ who lives. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. This is exactly what with that story that we're talking about. When, I'm, when I know that, when I know that God did that for me, I'm expected to live that life. I'm expected to live because it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I need to live the life of Christ. I need to live the life of righteousness. And I need to do that is because this life that I have now does not belong to me. This life does not belong to me. It belongs to Christ because he bought it at a very expensive price, which is his blood that was shed today on the cross. So I don't belong to myself anymore. And that's why when people say, I'm free to do whatever I want, this is my choice, I do this. No, it's not. My life does not belong to myself. My life belongs to Christ who died for me because I was supposed to be the one that died, not him. But because of his love for me, he took my spot. And when we think about how can I live that life, where do I get the motivation from? Where do I get the energy from to live that righteous life? It comes down to the next part in the same verse that St. Paul said. He said, how I can live that life? It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. This is what he said. He said, I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God. So what's that faith and what's it going to What's it going to look like? What's going to motivate me to actually live that life of Christ? He said this. He said, Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the key here. We'll never be able to live the life of Christ. We'll never be able to live a righteous life that God is asking us to live without first fully acknowledging and understanding what God did for me without first acknowledging that he loved me and gave himself for me. This is so personal. St. Paul did say for us, for everyone, he said for me. This is so personal. And this is what it comes down to. I need to feel and I need to acknowledge that this is a personal relationship with Christ. This is a love relationship. God loves me personally, by name. And this will give me the motivation to live the life that he wants me to live. Many people think that the righteous life is will do practices, will do pray and fast and, and attend uh, the... They'll think they're bad and they think there's no hurt in them and they'll fall into despair. Some people fall into despair is because they've been committing the same sin again and again and year after year and they think there's no hope. But today is a day of hope. Today is the day that God said, I'm going to take all your sins on the cross and I'm going to save you. So I give you a chance to start fresh. All you need to do is return to me, confess and repent. And I'm happy to take over all this and to give you a second chance. So it's a message of hope today. It's a message of hope that our, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ gives us life. It's life giving. It's a life giving that gives us hope. It's a life giving that no, no, not like any other thing that we've heard of before in our life. And we need to fully understand and believe in that. And this is the way that we can actually benefit from his death for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ died for everyone, but who's willing to receive that? He's willing to give that to anyone who accepts him. And today is the day of acceptance. Today, we need to accept that salvation. Ask God, we thank you for your salvation today and help me to live the life that you want me to be. I want to be not me anymore that I'm living, but you who lives in me. Glory be to God forever.